All righty, my friends. We are back from our short, short, short little break. Sorry about the stream going down. Probably it knew we were on break and so gave itself a break. So best time to go offline. But uh, we are back after a crazy, crazy fight. And uh, was it a dream? I don't know. So I'm going to pass it right back to Doreen as we figure out what's going on. Okay. Yeah, so you guys have seemingly woken up from a dream back, um, back from wherever you were right before you found yourself in Durf's Manor to begin with. Um, there are a little bit of cloying details that have kind of stuck with you, but it's not entirely clear to you guys as of yet if this was a dream, a nightmare, maybe a step in another dimension, but I'll, I'll open it up to you guys. What would you guys like to do going forward? So Ulrich, checking his arm, he has the bruising from the attack from the armor. Mm -hmm. Jaw still sore. Yep. Then he immediately checks his pockets for the bones that he took that were Lavinia's that secretly that he took mm -hmm. from the house. Your pockets are empty. Empty. What about the scroll of spiritual weapon that he had? It's no longer there. Okay. Or it's going to contemplate for a moment. Evander, as he's like slowly, slowly coming out of this sleep or whatever, still is kind of just the name Rose is stuck in his mind. Can he, after seeing that hand fade away, does he have any memory of Rose? Oh, absolutely. Um, everything that you guys have experienced, you remember it. So mm. you remember seeing Rose, you remember her calling you funny men, mm -hmm. and you remember the sound of, of her laugh and how she clung to you for safety. You remember going deep into that dungeon and that last fight, you remember very vividly. Lavender kind of wanted to just look up to Galen because Galen is in this in his tavern room with him, correct? Looks at Galen and just says, "My friend, what what just happened?" Galen would be taking a look at the blood that is on his axe and doesn't recall, obviously, severing any heads as of late. Mm -hmm. Um, and you notice that it's fresh blood. And it's fresh? Okay, I, I wanted to check it. I just look at Evander and I just go, I don't know, laddie. But I don't like any of this, to be honest. Um, Evander actually does want to quickly check his pack, because I believe at one point there was a harmonica that he had found that he had kind of put in his pocket. Can he check mm -hmm. his pocket to see if that harmonica is there? Yeah, absolutely. You would check it and you would not find anything in your pocket. So he's just kind of contemplating and then just kind of put his head down in his hands as he's trying to process what just happened. I like to think, Daddy, though, that if this has affected us, then it's affected those who are with us. I would like to find out if we can even find them, laddie. Uh, Evander's going to look up at Galen and say, you think they were real? Was that real? I think all of this was real, laddie. What about Tasso? What are you doing? So am I still in direwolf form, or did I come back in my... You awoke in your human form. Okay. Uh, so I'd immediately just start calling for Scruffles. See if he comes. Um, no, doesn't come. Okay. Uh, a little sad. Feeling that, you know, finally had a friend, somebody to spend some time with that is now gone. And um, really just kind of sit there just contemplating what had happened, trying to reason. Um, 
and also probably start searching the forest, at least in the near vicinity, to see if there's any type of abnormality that would have brought me somewhere or taken me somewhere, you know, fairy something, you know, just to kind of look around. Um, do I do I still feel exhausted? Like the hit points that were gone, the spell slots and everything, like do I feel physically exerted or do I come back as I felt before I left? You come back, and this would be the same for each of you. Um, you come back, maybe I would say a little bit shaken mentally and emotionally, but physically you are fine. So game-wise, mechanically, all your hit points are back up at the top, all your spell slots are returned. Um, it's as if you actually never physically fought any of these, okay. these fights. So I, I would I would just kind of start checking around my normal area of the forest to see if anything else is. All right, everything seems <coughs> absolutely normal. What about Connor? Uh, Connor, um, as he checks and sees everything he thought he'd picked up is gone, mm -hmm. uh, take a look at that parcel and open it up. Okay. And the parcel, um, you do at least find the one of the leather bound books that you found within Death Manor. Okay. And Not the Secrets of Alchemy book, one of the blank ones. All of those books are nowhere to be found. And you, you do also know that, you know, in that parcel is something that you've taken, that you're holding on to. It's not from Death or, or Durst Manor. And is Ulrich still covered in goop? How is uh, is there any residue from that that well, undead mass? No, none of that is is found on you. But you can maybe still <clears throat> still feel it. You can taste it. Yeah, back, <laughs> back of your throat. <laughs> the memory of it's very strong. <sighs> so I'm gonna say you guys deal with these kind of feelings for a while and eventually like life does it goes on and time passes you get back to your routine um whatever uneasiness you had from whatever that experience was uh again you're kind of settled on it's probably just a stupid nightmare that i had um time passes so a few weeks later, you find yourself wherever you normally would, would be. I would say it's probably about three weeks afterwards. I would imagine Evander and Galen, you're probably in a new inn. Yeah, new town. Uh, or headed to a new town, I would say, probably. Um, Tasso, probably still somewhere within your homeland forest. But Conard and Ulrich, where would you find yourselves? Ulrich would still be living his life, making his meager income the way doing that he the gardening. doing the gardening, living in the hovel on his landlord's property and the beggar's nest of Neverwinter. But in what but when he has any moment of spare time, he has become obsessed with this experience. He's gonna go to every library he can, find any book he can, read anything about this mist, about the Dursts, about um, Barovia, anything that you can find in these weeks that he's able to research. All right. I uh, will make note of that. He's going to constantly be looking out his window at night in case he sees any mists. <laughs> he's very yeah. mist wary right now. <laughs> he's traumatized. Yeah. Yes. I would like to say that Evander, as they as they you know go from town to town as they normally would, he probably wants to start keeping his ear open for. He heard the name Strahd while he was there, correct? Mm -hmm. He actually yeah. wants to start listening and asking stor for stories about a, a Strahd or a Lord Strahd to see if he can start to get a field to just to see if what it was was real. He's still not sure it was actually real or not. Okay. All right. What about Connor? 
Nerd is going to be making his way back toward Citadel Adbar, but I don't think he would have made it in three weeks. Okay. All right. So, once again, you guys settle down for your evening. And, again, you're maybe a little bit still on guard of based off of your, your past experiences. But you've now gone back to your normal nightly routines. And it's been a few weeks. So we'll go down the list, just like we did the last time. So Ulrich, you are in your, your room, sleeping. Uh, what would you have? How would you normally sleep? How does Orc normally sleep? Yeah. Um, well, he's probably wrapped up in his old blankets, scratching at the fleas. It's, doesn't live in a lot of, you know, it's kind of an impoverished condition. Um, ever since that experience, I mean, he's probably got, got all kinds of books around them that he reads until he falls asleep. He definitely keeps his knife under his pillow. Okay. And he... He's just frightened that it's going to happen again. <laughs> every right. every day that he spends, he's just worried in the back of his mind, like, "Oh my gosh, what if what if it happens again?" All right. And what about Tasso? Just basically, uh, keeping watch over the forest and uh, finding a place to hunker down underneath a fallen log. You know, spends most of his time just out in the wild and. Nomadic with a normal set kind of territory and just find little places to, to bed down. All right, and do you sleep in your like your leather armor and everything, or? Um, I guess it kind of depends. You know, if I've been busy and running around and I just have to find a place quickly, then yes. Or if it's been you know kind of sticking in one place, it would you know a little bit more comfortable, but. It's rare that I stay in one place long enough to where I'd feel comfortable leaving things lying around. Okay, yeah, that's fair. All right, and what about uh, Connor? Um, I'll just try to get to Citadel Adbar and get back home. All right, but you're you're about to rest for the the evening. Okay. So um, yeah, he doesn't sleep in his armor or anything. Okay. Sit in the pack beside him. Sorry, what was that? Just keeps it in a pack beside him. All right. And Evander? Um, I would say Evander probably <clears throat> for these last three weeks, every time he finishes his, you know, nightly performance or whatever in he's in, he would actually probably be fixated on the songs that he heard, like the lullaby he heard, uh, Lavinia singing. So I feel like he would actually fall asleep with his kind of lute in his hand, kind of playing that, humming that song, trying to help it, help him refresh his memory and decide if, if he can decide if what he heard was real. Kind of like exploring through song what, what he experienced. So oh, fall, okay. as, fall asleep, kind of with his back up against the wall, sitting in bed with his loot in his hands. All right, and Galen? Um, I would probably finish up my late night brewing sessions before I take a swig of whatever I've concocted that evening to help me sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I still sleep in a chair with everything next to me. I do not sleep in the bed. Um, but I every night since that night, I do say a prayer um, every night to Lavinia and to Walter and to Rose and to the other kid. Thorn. Thorn. <laughs> um, as well as to Ulrich, to Tasso, and to Connard, wherever they may be. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, one thing 
I will say, Dungeon Master, um, of all the research Ulrich's been obsessing on, one thing in particular that he was really fixated on was the mention of dark powers, because that was the one thing that his mother had sort of alluded to that he remembers. So that's that's drawing the most of his attention. Okay. And where do you recall seeing that? That, shoot, that's a good question. Where did that come up? Um, I think it was when he was listening to the chanting on the lower levels, there was men, no, it was in the letter. It was in the letter that they found in the drawer where it first mentioned Strahd and Barovia and there was like a Dark Powers reference. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Checking your knowledge. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you for that rundown. I appreciate it. And as you guys settle in for the evening, hoping that Tonight will be free of, of nightmares. As you close your eyes, you can begin to feel your body relax and become loose and feel sleep kind of just cover, cover you. You begin to see the gray mist shimmering in front of you. And before you even understand really what's happening, you kind of can feel what's happening before you see it. You, be, you can hear hoofbeats, the sound of a carriage moving really quickly, the rocking of it, you know, back and forth. And as your, your body's swaying with it, you take a look down and around yourselves kind of get your bearings and you do find yourselves within a carriage very kind of tightly packed and it's jostling back and forth and you can just feel that it's moving at a very very breakneck speed somewhere you don't know and you take a quick look in your reflection and around at everyone you don't really recognize them or yourself. And I'll do this one at a time. We'll start with Ulrich here in the back. As you take a look at your reflection, you see that it actually changes. And you see instead a different face staring back at you. It's still pale, it has the dark hair, but it's not your face. Oh my God, hold on. It's not letting me just select your token. Oh my God. I did see myself disappear. Yeah. <laughs> and it works so, oh wait, I see why, hold on. There we go. Oh. Okay. So you see a younger self looking back at you. And let me then do Connard. I'll just go down the line here. So Connard, you look around and again, you don't recognize any of these faces staring back at you. And you don't even recognize your own face, which is it changes from a dwarven kind of rough looking face to a young human man. What in the hells? And then a mentor. Yes. Was the carriage supposed to disappear too? I don't see a carriage anymore. That's fine. Okay. It was getting in the way of all of this. So we'll, oh, I'll okay. bring that back later. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. <laughs> Um, but you see yourself change from your half-elf self into a human man. Hmm. Galen, again, rough-looking dwarf. And you see yourself in the reflection of the carriage windows 
change to this wild looking human man. <laughs> Tasso in the same vein. Your image is unrecognizable to you as well. And you see in front of you, in front of all of you, um, this kind of eccentric looking older gentleman. Uh, he's wearing a, a, a breast coat. He has these strange glasses on. His hair is um, half balding and swept back. And as he's, he's in, you can tell he's in the motion in the, in the middle of, of talking and saying something. And then he kind of reaches out to you, Galen, and just kind of like gives you a quick slap. Oi, Oleg, pay attention. This is important. Do you, do you understand what's at stake here? And to kind of give you guys as players an understanding of what's happening, there is a duality here. You are both Oleg and Galen. You retain all your memories as Galen, and you retain your memories as Oleg. But it's Oleg who is moving here, who's making these choices. Okay. I'm going to assign these characters to you. They're new characters. Let me do that first. Okay. Before we get into this. <laughs> What's happening? I know. <laughs> Crazy. Yes. So, this is my Halloween trick or treat. Oh, oh cool. okay. <laughs> Very cool. Um. So, give me a moment. I didn't want to assign it to you guys before this this moment because right. then I was worried if you guys would get in there, you would see it, be like, oh my god, what's that? <laughs> But I kept all your classes the same, so you don't have to learn everything new from oh, scratch. Thank God. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I barely know how that, a bard works. <laughs> that being said, you're you are Barovians. So with that mm. is it's a little bit different than your standard classes. So you're gonna find a couple new abilities, some new spells that are in there. Um where did I put uh, Halloween stuff here. Hold on. I would like to file a formal complaint, though. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know why Tasso gets to be Gerard Butler, good looking, <laughs> and the rest of us not necessarily as much. Hey, right, I got like so, an Aragorn look. I'm cool. I'm cool with it. Yeah. So what I, I figure is we'll just kind of set this up, and I'll give you time um, to look over everything before our next session. Sounds Very good. Cool. Yeah. yeah this, going to be a very tight constrained session next time this isn't going to be something that we're going to be continue beyond that one session and i'll explain that later but let me first okay. edit everything in here so Turul that vadu is going to be it is going to be you tasso and I think for the most part, all these character tokens are pretty cool looking. Yeah. Merrick cool Merrick Polinski is going to be Ulrich. I apologize, my computer's just a little bit slow, so it's moving a snail pace here. So like I said, your class is the same. There's just gonna be a little bit of extra stuff in there. But while I do this, did you guys have any questions? Yes. So, so many, so many questions. <laughs> so many. Go ahead. Um, okay, so first of all, we, as our original selves, retain the memory of all the experiences that happened, right? So Ulrich oh, knows, no. Galen, Tasso, everybody. You know their face. Um, again, these faces you don't know. Right, but right. But yes, you would know, you re would remember Galen and Tasso and every everything else. And everything else that happened. Mm hmm Okay. And then, and of course, now everyone else is a stranger, but then 
while we're inhabiting this body, I'm trying to understand this dual experience. So is it, is there like a familiarity here? Like I've always been inhabiting this body and this identity, or does it seem completely new to me? Um, it's new to Ulrich. Ulrich will not understand what's happening. Okay. Merrick is going to understand. Merrick is going to know who these gentlemen are. And you guys will all remember what you're actually doing here, even though in the split second, your other personalities from, like, we'll just call it our prime of a plane, kind of go over for just a second, and you're kind of lost. But then it kind of resurfaces Merrick's memories, you know? So then you you understand what's going on. Um, so, so does that mean like Tasso wouldn't necessarily have any influence over this character? I wouldn't try to say, no, 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 I'm Tasso. Like, I know right. who I am and I am this person, right? Okay. Yes. So that's a very good point, Tasso. So you guys are all on a very, very specific mi uh, mission. And you want to achieve that mission. Uh, there's nothing that Tasso could say or feel that would deter Toro from wanting to do that. Mm -hmm. So you guys need to take on this whole new entity for one session and kind of reframe things. And I will help you with that. Um, I guess my question would be, how are our prime characters experiencing this? Are they experiencing it as a dream? Is that how they I feel? If that's how they feel you guys are definitely experiencing it as viewers only like okay. your audience watching it mm. from a first person perspective gotcha okay and does this seem like a like a frightening experience or does it just seem natural or neutral it i wouldn't say it's frightening uh it's confusing but you also have the the feelings of your Barovian self kind of pulling through and letting you know what's normal and what's supposed to be done. And this it's probably getting a little complex here, but so my prime personality is Ulrich. I'm aware of this other personality's feelings and experiences and consciousness, but is it, but do I know if they feel the same way about me that I do them? Like, do we, can we understand each other's level of like mutual awareness? Not really. Okay. You're just, again, you're viewing this as the audience. You don't know on the other side of the screen what they're thinking or what they're feeling. Okay. So Merrick wouldn't have any knowledge of Archon. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Correct. But I have knowledge of Merrick as Ulrich. You have, yes. You kind of have that, that history uh, Interesting. of Merrick. Weird. So it's kind of like a one-way like memory almost yeah. Yeah. yeah weird okay okay <clears throat> all right so i'm going to assign this last character sheet and then i'm going to kind of reload my roll 20 because it's slow as molasses <laughs> yeah, uh, in the character you gave me all i see is the bio and info tab and there's nothing in it oh uh, what the hell are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's nothing in mine either oh okay i guess i see mine like yeah, I see bio and info with nothing else. Yeah. Log out and log back in because I can barely maneuver in here. Oh boy. It's me. It's Oleg. So that will be Dargos <laughs> Rilski. Rilski. Okay. You just love Halloween so much, you've got to give even our characters costumes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is um, designed to be a one shot um, uh. held very, and again, it's a very, very tight timeline. And because we're reaching towards our end anyway, uh, I will set this up for you guys. And I'll double check all your character sheets because I spent a lot of time prepping these. So if it didn't <laughs> save right, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> but you guys are going to have to take over these new characters. And I'll, I'll give you the, the premise real quick. As Rictavio, um, well, not Rictavio, uh, hold on, what's his name? I don't know what's going on with my computer. 
but you recall that you are in this carriage because you've been picked um, by a very prominent vampire hunter to dispatch Shrod von Zerovich. He's picked you guys in particular. Um, and again, it's because you guys are Barovians, you know, this isn't the first time there's been a, a revolt to type of revolution to go against Strahd. Um, however, normally, you know, a lot of Barovians would not bother doing something like this. They're far too scared and timid. They would never come up against Strahd in this manner. But you are different. And um, Van Richten has, has seen this in you. And he has helped hone your skills and prepare you as best as, as possible. And he's decided that tonight is the night. It has to happen. You guys need to make the first wave of attack uh, upon the castle and find Strahd as quickly as possible as the reinforcements then follow suit. So this is where you guys are headed. You understand that you're headed towards Ravenloft. You understand that you are headed to do battle with Strahd himself. And I'm doing this for multiple reasons. One, you guys, if your character sheets are correct, you will see that uh, you are much higher level than you are in your regular selves. And this is to not only give you guys as players a little taste of what can be if we continue to play Curse of Strahd, um, I am also doing it because I want your characters to have kind of a, a clue on what they're in for, what to prepare for. Hmm. And as players, you guys should know that too. Um, and again, kind of DM player conversation here. Normally when I run games, I try to make it challenging for my players, but I don't want to like, I don't want it to be DM versus players. I'm putting that aside for Strahd because Curse, you know, Strahd is a very, very different villain who is out to win. He's very strategic. So not that I want you guys to metagame, but as you guys progress through Barovia, I want you guys to have these conversations outside of me. So however you guys want to have conversations about what's going to happen when you meet Strahd as you guys get to that point, feel free to do that. So this is going to get a, give you a little taste of what to expect. Hmm. Um, so so essentially, our characters are going to have the memories of these other one-shot characters hmm? as a reflection of, we know what we're up against, or at least we've gotten a taste of what we're up against. We right. know we need to prepare. And you're fully okay with us taking table talk outside of sessions. Mm -hmm. so that we can play chess against you. You should. You absolutely should. Because <laughs> okay, I don't because like it. I know, I know the module. <clears throat> I know Strahd. I know he is that type of player who is going to, he's going to learn your strengths and weaknesses and use them against you. Hmm. And so it's only fair for you guys as players to kind of see that as well. That way, when it does finally come to fruition, you guys finally, as your proper characters meet Strahd, it isn't, I don't want you guys to be blindsided by anything. I don't want you guys to go out and look up the stat blocks and try to metagame Strahd. And even if you do, it's not going to be anything you find online. I'm making my own changes to it. Mm -hmm. This should give your characters an idea of, oh shit, like this is, this dude, like, is very serious. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for anyways. But yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and strategize if you want against Strahd, if you can. Well, sure, Strahd, I'll be, I'll be asking Strahd. these guys like, okay, how do I build my bard if we're gonna fight against a freaking <laughs> super vampire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. You guys should be having those conversations in a way, especially if you're un unsure. Um, but that's, it's also supposed to be a little bit, you know, fun, a little bit something out of the ordinary, a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit of a break of what we have been doing. Um, and then, and then I, I, I just figure we'll see where it goes. And it is going to be very well contained within those four hours. It is a time limit and all that will be explained 
um, well, actually, it's probably better we're doing it now, so we we'll, won't have to take those four hours to do it. You will, I'm going to have a little timer. <laughs> You'll have four hours exactly to do what you need to do. And as you guys are continually down this, um, this road, you can see these very kind of dark, gloomy trees shrouded in mists. And um, Van Richten kind of like looks at you, Oleg, do you remember? Do you remember what Madame Eva said? The fortunes, the fortunes. <sighs> ay, ay, ay. Okay, all right, let me, let me run it down for you again. And so you recall, all of you, once he says fortunes, you recall, and you guys should get a piece of paper ready. You recall that Madam Eva has dictated, has foretold the fortunes that we need to fight Strahd himself. Firstly, probably his greatest weakness, it will be the Sun Sword, and we can find that in his brother's tomb. And then he turns to kind of um, looks back at you, Merrick. And the, the symbol of Ravenkind, Merrick, do you remember where that is? And it, he kind of just doesn't even wait for you to, to answer. The North Peak Tower, my men. Oh, you, you have got to remember this. And then the tomb, the tomb of Strahd himself. That should be within his study. And he gets really close um, to you, Dargos, and says, Dargos, that's me. This may, this may be the most important thing, his enemy. And this he is not expecting. His enemy will be his bride. Oh. You must find Sorina. She will help you defeat the monster. So. And then, when you are ready, when we are ready, we will, we should be able to find the fiend himself, the devil Strahd, within the audience hall in the castle. Okay. May I um, ask a potentially probing question? And if you as a DM don't want to answer it, you don't have to. Sure. But what was just laid out to this team, is this the same parameters that our primary team is going to need? Or will... You'll have to wait and see for that. Okay. I don't want to give too much away. Right. I just didn't know how deep the rabbit hole went. Like if this was you know, <laughs> something that was going to be very important to you know our primary team, or if this is just okay. part of what we're doing now. All right. I mean, I will tell you at least that information I gave you is going to be very, very pertinent for our next session. Okay. Some of it is going to carry over. Um, how much that we'll have to wait and see what at Madam Eva says during our telling. Okay. okay. So this is all information that Madam Eva's fortunes told each of us. Is that correct? Uh, Madam Eva has told that to. Rictavio here. Oh, okay. oh, okay. But, and he's then told it to you. And you said the tomb of Strahd is in his study or the tome? The tome. The tome. Study. Okay. All right. So as you guys make your way to the castle, I will give you a moment for any just last general questions for, you know, in character, out of character. Uh, yeah. I'm, is Merrick a boy? I can't tell from the <laughs> portrait. Merrick, Merrick is a boy. <laughs> okay. Just making sure. You're actually Arya Stark. Is that who you actually are? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Arya. Um, as he was telling us or reminding us of these fortunes, did it seem like 
these were individual tasks that we each had, or this is something we all work together on? Um, he's made it very, very clear that you guys need to work as a group. Okay. Uh, the castle itself is a maze and laden with, with traps and monsters, not, you know, Kurt, you know, Strahd himself excluded. So you guys definitely should not break off alone. Okay. Wait, what was this, the North Peak Tower? North Peak Tower, yes. Peak or keep? Peak. Peak. Okay. okay. What was that, that? The symbol of Ravenkind. Yeah. Okay, the symbol of Ravenkind. Symbol of Ravenkind. Will, you might go over this eventually, but will our characters have knowledge of where these places are within the keep before no. we get there? We won't. Okay. Nope. You, you guys have never visited the, the castle before. You've never been invited by Strahd. Um, so you guys are kind of going in blind. Okay. And you mentioned and that we... Sorry, go ahead. No, go on. Oh, you mentioned that... Um, we were referred to as vampire hunters. Uh, so my question... No. no? Okay. What Rick Tavi... And as you guys are making your way down this road, you Ooh. can see that the castle looms ahead. <laughs> and at that moment, you can hear this crashing at the top of the, the carriage. And these giant claws are kind of coming in, breaking the wood, and you can hear... Um, the, the driver let out this loud, blood-curdling scream, and then suddenly he goes silent. But the crashing and the clawing still continues, and Rictavio goes to bring out his weapon, but it's a little, it's a little too slow. He's probably too busy answering your questions, and then suddenly Claw grasps down on him and he yanks him out of the carriage. Yikes. And you can see through the windows this gargoyle carrying him and then dropping him <laughs> Wow! in, in a, the nearby gorge that encompasses the, the front part of the castle here. <laughs> Your carriage is kind of careening and uh, kind of going wild and then finally crashes and you find yourself in front of Castle Ravenloft itself. Oh. And that will end it. Whoa. <laughs> How's that for a teaser? That's pretty amazing. Love the music going on too. Yeah. It's awesome. Right. Yeah, so the, again, the music is tabletop audio. That little picture that you saw of Castle Ravenloft itself um that's also uh another just awesome creator that you can also find on patreon it's james rpg art he does a lot of you'll see a lot of his work in a lot of curse of Strahd streams <laughs> like it's everywhere <laughs> that was a cool that was a, that was a great image with the lightning and everything it's great yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, something to look forward to um but that's that's where I'm going to end this, and anything else, any other questions you guys probably have, we can discuss later. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you again, Doreen, for an amazing thank you stream. Very much. That was a, that was a blast. At least Connor <laughs> wasn't the one who was dying. It was Ulrich who was <laughs> having a hard time. Three times now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we also got to see Tasso in action with his shape shifting. That was pretty awesome. I didn't know he could do that. That's my... When I heard Shapeshifter, I had no idea what that would entail, so that was pretty awesome. Well, that's just because I'm a druid. You haven't even seen the uh, the shifter part of my... Uh, oh. Yet. <laughs> we haven't even seen it. That's amazing. Well, uh, again, I'm going to say thank you again to Doreen for doing an amazing job. I can't even imagine how much work it takes to put all this together in Roll20. So thank you for doing this. Thank you to Archon, to... Uh, Jeremiah to Scott to Zach and Doreen and from all of us here I hope you all had all y'all had a great time I look forward to two weeks from now getting to see our like OP versions to uh 
to fight Strahd himself. So, hope you all had a good time. We will see you all next time. Peace out, happy gaming, and you all have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you all next time. Later, Later all.